Hello chemists, this is Ms. Placino and you're watching screencast 13.1 on oxidation states. Today's the first lesson in the redox and electrochemistry unit and it's really fundamental to the entire unit. So today we're going to talk about how oxidation states are assigned to elements within a compound or molecule. Let's get started with some basic definitions that we're going to need for the whole unit. Uh, first we have oxidation. Oxidation is the loss of electrons. When an element undergoes oxidation, it causes the oxidation number or oxidation state, we'll be using those two terms interchangeably, to increase. Reduction is the opposite of that. Reduction is the gain of electrons, and that causes the oxidation number to decrease. Um, there are a lot of definitions that are going to come up over the course of this unit, and we've got a lot of fun little mnemonic devo uh, devices to help you keep them um, committed to memory. So for this, we've got this lion. Do you know what his name is? It's not Simba. It's Leo. What does Leo the lion say? No, he doesn't say roar. He says grr. You might be wondering, what on earth does this mean? Oh, the loss of electrons is oxidation. The gain of electrons is reduction. So yes, I know that it's cheesy, but it's actually really helpful. I'm sure you'll remember Leo the lion says grr. So today we're going to talk about oxidation states, and as we move forward, we're going to relate them to oxidation and reduction reactions. Um, so you might be wondering, what does the oxidation state or oxidation number, again, they're really going to be used uh, as the same term, actually tell us about a compound? And it depends on if the compound we're looking at is ionic or covalent in nature. So if we're talking about ionic compounds, uh, the ionic compounds essentially just show you the charge of each ion present uh, if you're looking at a simple binary compound. So when we say binary, we're talking about consisting of just two ions. For example, sodium chloride is binary. That's a sodium ion and a chloride ion. Something like calcium chloride is also considered binary. It's a calcium ion and two chloride ions. Things get a little bit more complicated when we throw polyatomic ions into the mix. We'll talk about how to deal with those, but when you think about ionic compounds in general, oxidation states and charge are essentially the same meaning. That is not the case with covalent compounds. Um, if we remember, covalent compounds exist or are formed when nonmetals bond and share electrons. Um, so oxidation states or oxidation number in covalently bonded molecules are going to be based on electronegativity. And really what the oxidation state is telling us is how the electrons are shared between the atoms. We know that based on differences in electronegativity, even though two atoms may be technically sharing their electrons, they don't have to share evenly. So oxidation numbers or oxidation states are really just a way that we can kind of describe how the electrons are being shared um, based on the electronegativity of those atoms. Um, it's really not too bad. We're going to show you how to do this. You're going to want your reference table so that you can look up the oxidation states of the elements. Uh, so flip to the periodic table. And we're going to start with this compound, KMNO4. This is potassium permanganate. Um, so we've got a positive ion and a negative ion. So this is definitely an ionic compound. And as promised, things do get a little bit more complicated once we throw in a polyatomic ion, such as permanganate, MnO4, with a charge of minus one. So what we're going to try to do is assign oxidation states to each atom present in the compound. So what is the oxidation state of potassium? What is the oxidation state of manganese? And what is the oxidation state of each oxygen present? So before we get into exactly how to do that, let's get some basic rules down. So when you go to determine the oxidation states of elements present in the compound, the first thing that you want to do is assign oxidation states to the elements that have only one possible value. If you take a look at your periodic table and you look at group one metals, for example, as you go down that column, every group one metal only has a possible charge or possible oxidation state of just plus one. Uh, same thing with group two, all of those have to be plus two. Once you get into the transition metals, there are a variety of different charges that those elements can have. And if you take a look over at your nonmetals, something like nitrogen, for example, there are a whole bunch of different oxidation states a nitrogen atom can take on. So we want to start by assigning kind of the no-brainers, the ones that only have one possible value. 
From there, we're going to multiply the subscript of an element by its oxidation state to find the total charge contributed by that element. This is about as technical as the math is going to get this unit. Simple multiplication. And again, we'll show you how to do this in just a minute. And finally, unless we're talking about a polyatomic ion, compounds and molecules are neutral. That means that your positive and negative charges have to cancel out, whether you're talking about ionically bonded or covalently bonded um, chemicals. So I'm going to get into your practice problems and we'll walk through KMNO4 together. So in your notes, you have something that looks like this. We've got KMNO4, and we're trying to figure out the oxidation state and total charge contributed by that element. Uh, so we know the first thing we want to do is go through and assign oxidation states or oxidation numbers to elements that have only one possible oxidation state. If you take a look, potassium is a group 1 metal, and group 1 metals are always going to have oxidation states of plus 1. No possible way around that. <clears throat> Um, if you look over at manganese, there are many different oxidation states to choose from, so we're going to skip that element just for the time being. And if you check out oxygen, oxygen only has one oxidation state listed as well. More often than not, it tends to be minus 2. In order to find the total charge, we're going to take the subscript of the element and multiply it by the oxidation state. So in the case of potassium, there is no subscript, so it's implied that it's a subscript of 1. So 1 times 1, good, this is math I can handle, is equal to 1. Again, we'll skip over manganese for the time being. If you look over at oxygen, its oxidation state is minus 2. I'm going to take my oxidation state, multiply it by the subscript of oxygen, so that's 4. 4 times negative 2 gives me negative 8. All right, because this is a compound, we know it has to be neutral, so all the charges have to cancel out and give us 0. So I've got plus 1 plus x, I don't know anything about manganese just yet, um, and then I've got minus 8 has to equal 0. So hopefully this is really straightforward and simple algebra, stuff that you've been doing for years. I've got one manganese atom in this compound. Um, I already have a charge of minus 7 overall. So the oxidation state of manganese really has to be plus 7. If it's anything else, the charges will not cancel out. So I've got plus 7 from the manganese atom. I have a total charge of 7 times 1, so this is also plus 7, and of course all of this cancels out. And that's really all there is to it. Uh, a lot of times when you're assigning oxidation states to ionic compounds, it's going to include a polyatomic. Um, whether you're talking about something like the permanganate ion, or you're looking at sulfates or sulfites, uh, you're going to know the oxidation state of two of the elements and you're going to be left with one where you've got some choices to make. So a lot of them follow this format, and if you can tackle simple algebra, you should be in pretty good shape. Now let's get back to the notes. Okay, just a couple of helpful hints for you. Um, first, pure or uncombined elements have oxidation states of zero. What we mean by pure or uncombined is we mean the elements as they exist in nature. Uh, so for example, something like iron, is just Fe all by itself, that's uncombined, it would have an oxidation state of zero. Uh, something like nitrogen. Nitrogen does not exist as just a single element all by itself. It is N2. That has an oxidation state of zero. So anytime you have an element by itself or something like a diatomic or even a triatomic molecule, those have oxidation states of zero. When we're talking about covalently bonded molecules or polyatomics that consist of two nonmetals, um, we have to decide which nonmetal is going to get a positive oxidation state and which one will have a negative oxidation state. In order to do that, you want to compare electronegativities. The more electronegative element will have the negative oxidation state. That means that that element is going to have control over those electrons, and it makes sense that if it has the electrons most of the time, it should have a negative charge. 
All right, so we have a whole bunch of practice problems to play around with. And since this is new and it's really important, like I said at the beginning of this lesson, assigning oxidation numbers and oxidation states really is kind of, you know, everything's going to build off this. So I want to make sure that you've got it. So I want to start with A through F. Um, what you need to do is come up with the formula based on the name and um, find oxidation numbers for each element present. Uh, so pause the video, um, try that out. Uh, at the very least, go ahead and write out the uh, formula, and then we'll do a couple oxidation numbers together. So I've gone through and come up with a formula for all of those practice problems. Hopefully that's just review stuff that we've covered earlier in this school year. Uh, so the new stuff is going through and assigning oxidation numbers to each element. Um, so if we look at sodium nitrate, NaNO3, um, I want to go through and assign oxidation numbers to elements that only have one. Uh, sodium is a group one metal and therefore always has to have a charge of plus one. Nitrate. Uh, is a polyatomic, so we've got a little bit more work to do there. If I take a look at nitrogen, there's a whole bunch of different oxidation numbers that ox uh, that nitrogen can have. If I look at oxygen, oxygen generally takes on a negative two charge, or I should say oxidation number. Uh, so what I need to do is go through and figure out what the oxidation state of nitrogen must be. I'm gonna take negative two, times three because I've got three oxygen atoms that gives me a negative six sodium is plus one um, so in order for all the charges to cancel out and this to be balanced nitrogen has to have a plus five oxidation state in this example let's look at a covalently bonded molecule ammonia NH3 now mathematically there are two different ways that you can approach this question but from a chemistry perspective only one of them is correct uh, so we know that hydrogen is either going to be plus one or minus one. And again, nitrogen has a whole bunch of possible oxidation states. In order to figure out whether hydrogen should be the positive or negative oxidation state, we need to look at electronegativities. The more electronegative element is going to have the negative oxidation state. I don't have a reference table in front of me, but I know that fluorine is the most electronegative element on the periodic table. Nitrogen is a whole lot closer to fluorine than hydrogen, so there's a very high likelihood it has a greater electronegativity. That means that nitrogen has to have the negative oxidation state. Nitrogen is going to be negative 3. Hydrogen has to have the positive oxidation state. So it's going to be positive 1, and positive 1 times 3 plus negative 3 gives me 0. Um, so go through, try out those practice problems, and I'll get the answers up in just another moment. So I've got plus 2 and minus 2 for zinc and oxygen, respectively. I've got plus 1 for hydrogen and minus 2 for oxygen and water. For calcium hydride, I've got plus two for calcium, whoops, and a minus one for hydrogen. And in carbon dioxide, oxygen will be minus two, and carbon will be plus four. Uh, there's some more practice problems for you to try out. Definitely take the time and make sure you've got this down. So with our redox reactions, and that's really the direction we're going to be going after this lesson, um, we're going to look for changes in oxidation states, or changes in charges if you're thinking about ionic compounds. Um, electrons are transferred in between elements. Um, and oxidation and reduction always has to come in pairs. We know oxidation is the loss of electrons, reduction is the gain of electrons, so it makes sense that as one element is oxidized, another must be reduced. And as oxidation states change, like it shows you in this picture, uh, some of the physical and chemical properties of that um, substance might change as well. For example, different ions of vanadium have different colors, and it's all due to different oxidation states. All right, guys, that wraps it up for today. I hope you found this helpful, and thanks for tuning in.